watching CBS Sports Network. Welcome back to lead off at Super Bowl Park, CBS Super Bowl Park. Yes, right. Where uh, helicopters overhead. That's because the fifth all-time leading score in NFL history is here. That's why. I'm a lot of trouble. Yeah, Matt Stover, Ring of Honor for the Baltimore Ravens. And I, I wanted to ask you, just kind of starting, like you were with the Ravens from the move to Cleveland to Baltimore. There when Ray Lewis got his start. There when Ray Lewis went through the murder trial. All the way to when Ray Lewis led the team. Maybe the most dynamic defense we've seen since the, the Bears in the mid-'80s. Give me your sense of what Ray Lewis has meant to this organization. Well, from 1996 to 2001, I, I looked at Ray, and he wasn't as mature as he should have been. He was more of a young kid, a boy, growing up, trying to find himself. When something like that happens to you, either it makes you better or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It made him a better person. He grew up into a man, and at that point, he took personal responsibility of his life and how he continued to manage it, and he began to give his life away. And what I mean by that, if you if you watched him and how much he loves these guys on this team and how much he's just really just breathed life into them, and when he does that, it just brings out a champion heart in all these all the, the players on the uh, on the Ravens. Let's talk about one of those teammates, Joe Flacco. You're with him in his rookie season, so you've really seen him develop. He's the kind of guy. A lot of people think that he's overrated. I personally think he's underrated. He does really well in the playoffs. He has eight touchdowns, no interceptions. He knows how to win playoff games. Your impression? Well, I think he's underrated, without question. Uh, when I saw him step in in 2008, I was in my 18th season in the NFL watching this kid come in as a rookie, taking us all the way to the AFC Championship game. Joe Flacco, to do that, the type of person he is, he has to have a tremendous amount of character, but also a great ability to play in the position. And he did that, and he led an offense that was suspect at the time. Remember, Kyle Bowler and Troy Smith were the guys who were supposed to be playing that year, and Joe Flacco steps in and actually wins and mm -hmm. takes us to the AFC Championship. So yeah, like, I think he's underrated. No, I mean, look, in comparison to Kyle Bowler and Troy Smith, no question. But yeah. I mean, you wouldn't put him in the, the Brady, uh, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, those feel like the top four. And then there's that second category with the Roethlisberger's, Eli Manning, and now Joe Flacco would be part of that group. Is that, is that a fair? I would absolutely say that. And I, I think that's because of the amount of time those other guys and the championship those guys have been winning over a period of time. Now, if Joe gets to number two and wins, yeah. then we've got to really reconsider our yeah. thoughts there. He, he, also, he also is a downfield thrower, and some of these other guys are taking mm -hmm. dumps, so you're trying to compare the passing numbers in terms of percentage, he's a higher risk reward based upon the fact that unlike so many guys in the NFL, he can push it down the football field. It hasn't always been that way though, Doug. It's been a guy who's really trying to find himself through our offense and how Cam Cameron yeah. was calling the plays. Ray Rice was a big part of that. But now he has taken those risks and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that he's willing and more mature to do it. Let me ask you about the comments of ESPN Skip Bayless. Okay, So Skip Bayless said this about kickers affecting football games. Here's the quote. Why do we blindly <laughs> accept that the great game of football is decided by a goofy, gimmicky kick between two <laughs> poles? These kicks count for three points. Wake up, people. This is madness. He wants field goal kicking out of the game. Of course they do. Yeah. Until they understand that it's a great way to finish a game, too. I mean, if, you, if there's only one way to score a, a, any points in the game, it kind of lessens the amount of excitement in a game, too. The That's NFL true. knows Fans love scoring. they want to score points. Can so I, also, this is, a time, this, argument. this is a time, too, when, when we're trying to make the game safer. You know, yeah. we're trying to find ways to where, you know, you can score points, you can play this game without people suffering career-ending end, injuries. I mean, kicking, I, I, kickers I, are the one, me, the one guys that David can stay Aker's in the game for as long as they could. 20 yeah, true, years, David but David's Aker's. hurting a little bit right now. Let, but, yeah. let, me, let me help you with the argument here, okay? If you look at basketball, basketball is not just, it's also decided by free throw shooting, you know? It's also decided by bench players. It's just the whole idea of somehow you're less than a man because you're a field goal kicker <laughs> and you're not putting the ball into the end zone. Let's right. keep it's in mind of, it's also skipping. It's part of scheming, it's part of <laughs> strategies, it's part of play calling. It's part of what makes football special and unique, that sometimes you go for seven and sometimes you go for three and sometimes you decide to punt because you can't go for seven or go for three. Well, well the way I look at it is kind of in a military sense, too. They're the guys who are on the front line that are getting shot at every single day. Yep. And then they're the guys that's in the grass hiding, and he's got the sniper rifle in his hand. And he, they have the same amount of pressure, the same pressure. amount of responsibility? Exactly. That's how I look at a kicker. Same type of responsibility, but 
little less in the front lines, but have a great responsibility to do it. Um, you you made a game-winning kick in your last year with the Ravens. I mean, you were a clutch kicker. Of course, you won a Super Bowl with the Ravens. So you're a great guy to call on here. <laughs> Icing the kicker. Yeah. Does it work? No. Nah. I mean, it can. I mean, there are times when you do need to go to the restroom before a, a kick or something like that. <laughs> And that's a nice way to say it, right? Yeah, right, yeah, sure, there you go. But, but really what it comes down to is that it gives you more opportunity to line up the kick, figure out the environment that you're kicking in, sure. like we saw Justin Tucker do in the, against the Denver game. He went right after the overtime, yep. checked out the surface, because, and there's nothing illegal about that. He just could not hold up the play of game, and he didn't. And you really want to figure things out. That's what an icing does for me. It allows me to line up the putt a little bit longer. Your Super Bowl pick, who do you think has the advantage? Well, you know, I'm going to go with my hometown, but that's because, not just because I, they're my hometown, but because I think that they have the most momentum coming into the game. They've been through it all. They lost their last four of five games in the league, end of the season, and then they won out on the playoffs. And now you've got a guy named Ray Lewis who's retiring. They're playing for something bigger than just the game itself. The guys continue to focus well on each other. They love one another. they got a tight bond. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that you've, guys, you've got leaders like Joe Flacco. You've got a Ravens pin on. I know. You know. Look at that. You've got the Ravens, Ravens ring on. A little ring team on. promotion. No, how, how much are they paying We, we asked him. We wanted I don't want to be long-winded there, but, yeah, it is true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll let it slide since he played in Cleveland. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, I was a brownie. They left. They uh, left. They pulled the, the LeBron before it was LeBron. Terrible. Oh, it was terrible. She hates LeBron. She loves and everyone else is still going to get in the Hall of Fame. I, I, I had a contract. For, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> That's true. Thanks for joining us. All right, when we come back, Doug and I are going to rattle off some bold predictions this weekend. And mine are very bold. I don't know about yours. So don't move. We also got our nightcap coming your way.